Blackstone out with first quarter results just a short time ago. And the stock, it is jumping. Take a look at this stock this morning. It is up over 4%. Company reporting distributable, er, distributable earnings per share uh, well above analyst estimates. The stock has far outpaced the S&P 500 over the past year. What up, folks? Life of Rudu back with another video today. I hope everybody's doing well. Remember, health is well. Please take care of yourself and your family. If you're new to my channel or if you've not done so yet, please make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the like button for this video. Also, hit that notification and the bell. This way, you're notified each and every time I drop a video. What we're talking about today is Blackstone. If you guys are not familiar with Blackstone, after this video, you will know. Take a look. The Blackstone Reef, they've They've been very active in that area. But as Jim mentioned earlier, active again today with the purchase of American campus communities. It's a $13 billion transaction. Uh, and it's two of the Blackstone funds. Uh, it's both uh, the B REIT, which I've talked about a bit, but want to talk right. a bit more about because it's such an important product overall in the real estate industry and what it's meant there, uh, as well as it is also their uh, Blackstone property. It's a core fund, you know, targeting like a seven, roughly a 7% return. But there's a look at American Campus uh, this morning. Of course, uh, the deal did represent, uh, what was it, a 14% premium to yesterday. The stock had been going up. The stock had been going up. It had been going up. And by the way, the cap rate, 4.25%. A couple of interesting things to note here on that cap rate. That was a cap rate that might have prevailed at the end of last year before rates moved up appreciably. And yet, despite that move up in rates, you're still talking about cap rates of less of 4.25%. And by the way, that's before CapEx. That's before SG&A. And so you really are talking about what? Returns of perhaps in the high threes, something along those lines. Student housing is what we're, uh, what the key portfolio is here. Usually does trade at a spread to traditional rentals. There may be more risk, of course, because if you lose the tenant, you're not going to get a new one, right? Kids come for the uh, semester and or the full year. Um, but again, the fact that asset prices have really not come down despite that ramp up in rates is an important one here, uh, as well as the overall growth of this B REIT. What a product. Uh, it started not that many years ago, still taking in roughly $3 billion a month. It's one of the largest REITs out there. This is perpetual capital being put to use, talking about roughly a 4% dividend. There has been capital appreciation, high net worth individuals approached by their broker. It might go something like this. Yeah, 4% dividend. It's Blackstone. It's real estate. They're the experts. Look at what they've done. Been capital appreciation as well. And it's an inflation hedge. You don't have enough real estate in your portfolio. And boom, every month that adds up to $3 billion more a, a, a month going into this thing. That's why they need to spend it. And by the way, Starwood's got one called the S REIT that takes in about a billion a month. The, the numbers are staggering in terms of what's come in here uh, and what will continue to and what it's meant really for the prices, therefore, that, that they're willing to pay. And again, they're not the most aggressive investors here. They use some leverage. Perhaps in this deal, they won't use any leverage. I don't know specifically. You know, maybe they'll put leverage on at a later date. Uh, because it would appear that they'd have positive leverage right now. Maybe they think rates are going to come down. But, Jim, it's been an interesting asset class, to say the least. And this B REIT has been, B -REIT has been the leader. Again, not a publicly traded REIT, but one of the largest out there. And every month getting bigger and bigger with bigger investments and big deals like this one. Uh, that they are at least well, a part of. They're not the sole yeah, buyer. This, this They're buying it with the other uh, Blackstone funds. You can't give up on things just because the Justice Department or FTC are tougher because this is a deal you know th this company had the stickiest uh payments because its parents paying for kids they tend to pick areas where it's uh, nice dorms you know basically dorms their parents are paying for yep and, and carl one of, the, one of the things i i've always, i mean i recommended this stock two weeks ago is wow it, good recommendation thank you <laughs> what is that i thought coming out of covid this thing would you know, people would come back to school but, I mean, I didn't think it would, like, get a bid. I mean, you know, it wasn't that long ago that people were staying at home. So it's gutsy, gutsy. Karen, thanks for coming on, Mark. Do you, I have a question about, we've seen big corporate interests in housing, um, you know, the Blackstones of the world, yeah. buying houses and making them available for rent. Do you think they are done with that now that rates have moved up and maybe the market's sort of topped out on prices? Or do you think they're still there because the value proposition of high rents is here for a while? 
I, I think they're here to stay. Uh, I think this is a business model, uh, you know, that that works a longer run. And there's a lot of capital sitting out there. The, these these institutional investors have raised a, a lot of uh, funds that they're going to deploy. Now, I suspect they're going to pause here. I, I you know I don't think they're going to sell. I mean, because they're long-term investors, they may not buy in this environment. They may be they may wait to see you know how things shake out and probably makes some sense, right? Because I do expect house prices in many of these markets where they're most active in the South and the West experience some price decline. So, you know, I think it would make sense to, for them to pause. But I think these are, are long-term projects. And by the way, going back to Melissa, uh, Melissa's first uh, question, it's another reason why there won't be a crash because you've got these investors in there that are, you know, long-term investors. They're not, they're not flippers. They're not looking for a quick buck. They're, this is a business model. Mark, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Sure, anytime. Mark Zandi of Moody's. Um, it's in, last week, Karen, I, you, you bring up the point about these big investors being into single-family homes. Starwood uh, announced that it was looking to sell two portfolios of single-family homes, which got me to thinking about this problem, if, if it does become a problem, of these investors selling those homes and what that does to the market. Yeah, right. I mean, they've been the ballast. Uh, well, maybe didn't need a ballast during the pandemic, right? There were tons of buyers everywhere and people are employed and you could work from anywhere, all of that. I, I, I am concerned that that big corporate presence declines and that will tilt the you know, supply demand dynamic and therefore prices more. Tenants marched into the Conrad Priebus office this morning. Housing is a human right! Fight, fight, fight! To get the attention of Blackstone, their new landlord. They say they've written to Blackstone and have not heard back. Ace San Diego, a tenants' rights group, organized the protest. Jose Lopez is the director. We're here today um, to demand that the Conrad Previs Family Foundation um, help us reach out to Blackstone and FBI management um, in order to schedule a meeting to meet with our tenants to discuss the concerns um, that they're facing at their buildings and um, have them recognize our um, San Diego um, Ace Blackstone Tenants Union. They specifically want Blackstone to agree to stop raising rents during California's state of emergency, which has been extended to March 2022, and that they want Blackstone to only raise rents by less than 3%, as well as a clear communication system with their landlords. Mariana Brito is a Blackstone tenant in Escondido. She told a Conrad Previs representative that speculating real estate firms are increasingly buying up homes and that they refuse to do what's right for tenants, such as simple repairs. The Conrad Priebus Foundation officially sold its housing portfolio to Blackstone for $1.1 billion in late August. In a statement to KPBS, Dan Yates, president of the board of the Conrad Priebus Foundation said, we understand a group of individuals is interested in speaking with the owner of these properties, but the Conrad Priebus Foundation no longer owns these properties and does not have any influence to broker these discussions. We encourage this group to reach out directly to the current owner. Kathleen is a Blackstone tenant in La Mesa. She says that her rent has gone up even though the building itself is not well maintained, with paint chipping off the walls and broken railings. We are not being respected as tenants. Um, the issues are not being taken care of. And the home that was once beautiful that we were living in now is embarrassing somewhat to bring family and friends. A representative from Blackstone told KPBS that any rents that have been raised are at less than market rate and that the company has committed $100 million to repairing units. The representative also said they won't force out any renters for renovations. Back at the Conrad Priebus Foundation offices, San Diego police did arrive on the scene, but no arrests were made. After two hours, tenants left the office without any firm commitments. But spirits still seemed high. We'll be back! We'll be back! Christina Kim, KPBS News. All right, folks, comment below and let me know what you guys think. As you can see, Blackstone is acquiring real estate like crazy. Um, it's kind of like Monopoly on steroids, the way that they're actually playing this game. Please make sure you do some research when it comes to Blackstone and BlackRock, those two conglomerates. Blackstone and BlackRock is going to blow your mind. I really appreciate you guys watching the videos. Please follow me on Instagram, Life of Rudu, and motivated.millionaire underscore LLC. Make sure you guys also go to the merch store, grab yourself a t shirt, a sweater, some type of an accessory. Support the campaign. I greatly appreciate it. Remember, health is wealth. Please take care of yourself and your family. We're going to a million with everything.